वेलकम एवरी वन टू प्रज्ञानंदा टेकिंग ऑन मक्सिम लगार्ड फ्रॉम फ्रांस प्रज्ञानंदा द रिसेंटली एंटर ट्वेंटी सेवन हंड्रेड प्लेयर इज टेकिंग ऑन द फ्रेंच ग्रांड मास्टर एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट गेम ऑफ द सेकेंड राउंड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड कप ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट सी हाउ गुड प्रग इज इन दिस टूर्नामेंट हाउ गुड ऑफ अ फॉर्म ही इज इन द गेम्स हैव बिगन मक्सिम प्लेज इज पॉन अप टू ई फोर Prag, what will he play? Will he go for e5? Will he play the Sicilian? He takes his time and goes for e5. Very solid in the first game with black generally in this mini match. You don't want to be pressing too hard and landing in a difficult position. Knight comes out to f3. Prag puts his knight on c6, and now the Ruy Lopez on the board with bishop b5. What will Prag do? Berlin a6. What is his plan? Whoa! He goes for the Cozio defense. Knight g7. Not very well known. You can see there. It has thrown his opponent off balance a bit. He took his time and brings his knight out to c3. Prague now plays his knight to g6. There's a saying that don't move your pieces twice in the opening the same piece. But Prague has kind of not heeded that. But this is all theory. he takes on d4 with his knight now suddenly the bishop on b5 looking a bit silly what is it doing there but on the other hand white can now capture take the knight and what it happens is the queen now stands very strong on the d4 square as you will see the queen now comes here to d4 and no one can sort of move it away and this is what maxim is actually counting on you can see prag has hardly used any seconds and he plays his pawn up to c6 asking the bishop to move away the bishop goes back to where does maxim want to play bishop e2 is the main move in this position and he actually goes yes he does that he goes bishop e2 and now in order to challenge this queen you can't use any of your pieces and so Prague goes queen b6 and he tells Maxim if you exchange that's very good for me it opens up my rook and therefore white avoids it good move queen d3 we are still in main line territory that's why Prague is also blitzing out his moves bishop e7 played but Maxim now improvising on the board plays f4 this has actually never been played before and that's why you can see Prague Nananda also now taking his time he is Whoa! He's taken what close to twenty-five minutes for this move, and now he castles. It's a very important decision because now his knight on g6 is slightly in trouble. Let's say if you play f5, the knight can jump back to e5. But look at what his opponent has done: h4, and he's asking Prague, "Where will your knight go after I play h5?" A flank attack. must be met with a break in the center that's what pragnananda does and he tells his opponent if you now take here i can chop with my knight and then my knight also has the f5 square so that is perhaps his plan or even he can go rook d8 he plays h5 now attacking the knight prag first takes with the pawn if knight takes on e4 we have knight h4 if queen takes e4 there is bishop h4 so he goes queen g3 now this is complete battle by lagard knight h4 played by prag what is he giving up two pieces for the rook what if i simply take it and lagard is actually taking it yes he takes it now if you take bishop h4 queen h4 white is clearly better because a check means bishop f1 but prag has something else on his mind he's not going to take it oh he first gives a check queen g1 check king goes on d2 then rook d8 check is almost a checkmate there and so bishop f1 played but what is prag's next move is he taking here but then queen takes prag down to 34 minutes he needs to find this amazing move and he finds it e3 what a classy move if you take bishop e3 i go bishop h4 and then this is hanging so you can't take the pawn and right now the threat is queen f2 queen f2 e f2 and then taking the rook you can see that maxim lagard is under lot of pressure there amazing chess by prag if rook h2 then there is other moves like bishop c5 possible he goes knight d1 and another classy move rook e8 king moves up to e2 and prag puts his bishop now brings in another piece wants to give a check here 
What an attack this is by Pragnananda. He's a piece down. But look at White's pieces all on their home squares. None of them are moving. B3 played. But this is already bad. Stopping the bishop coming there. Prag brings in another piece into the attack. What a brilliant attack this is. And 93. He chops off the pawn. But now what has Prag got on his hands? He goes bishop f6. He first attacks the rook here. The rook has to move. And where will the rook go? Rook b1. Yes, he plays his rook to b1. And where is the next attacking move? Pragnananda finds... Now he has 6 seconds, uh, six minutes to, to find this. He goes bishop f5. Another brilliant move. And now he's attacking bishop c2. The knight can't take it. It's pinned. And look at these two rooks on the highway. The queen into the territory. Queen f2, a blunder. He's actually missed that after bishop h4, queen g1, that is bishop g4 mate. Oh, you can see Lagarde there. He, he knows he's missed it. And Pragnananda gives him that stare. Because now if you take here bishop g4, notice how it's a brilliant mate. He has to take here. It's unfortunate that he's missed it. But Pragnananda now can chop off on c2, which is what he's going to do. This attack has culminated into a winning position for black. The king is right in the center now of the board and still has no shelter. The bishop is attacking the rook. If you go rook b2, I have bishop d3 check, picking up this bishop on f1. Maxime Lagarde now sacrifices his queen. Whoa! What's the plan here? Queen d8. Pragnananda takes it back. And now knight takes c2 is idea. Oh, he has three minor pieces for a queen. But black not only has a queen, but also an extra pawn. And the most important facet of this position is that the white king is exposed. And Pragnananda is going to make use of that. And Pragnananda is going to make use of that in perfect manner. He goes queen to c5. Queen goes back attacking the knight. Knight e3, when you have three pieces, you need them coordinated well. But in this case, they aren't coordinated. And so Prague now goes rook e8, pinning the knight. Good move. Excellent move. h5 pawn under pressure. King comes up. And now, how does Prague continue? He plays queen up to d4. He still has four minutes on the clock. 14 more moves to make. The threat is check and picking up the rook. So the king goes back. Have to also take care of the time. Queen c5 again. The threat is queen c2 check. Knight cannot take it as it's pinned and you want to pick up the rook. So perhaps Maxime Lagarde is going to repeat. Yes, king f3. But I think Prague is not going to repeat. He chops off the pawn. Queen takes h5. I, li I like the smoothness which, with which Prag makes his moves, you know. Uh, even when he has just 4 minutes, g4, he plays queen h1 and presses the clock softly. King g3. Hmm. And now, what do you do? Right now, if you take the knight, bishop takes, then the rook protects the bishop. So, no need to hurry up. Just be calm, be cool. h5 looks like a great idea. Trying to involve another pawn or piece into the attack but he goes rook e6 maybe the plan is rook h6 and trying to get in here bishop d2 played have to be careful that there's no discovered attack from the rook to the queen h5 prag plays it nice move pawn takes and now you can actually take this pawn with your queen yes the queen comes back and now the rook wants to enter with a check rook e1 now, let's see how Prag finishes it off. He goes, check. Okay. King goes back. The king hunt is just tremendous. Just when white pieces seem to get coordinated, check here. Suddenly, it seems that black has a mating attack. King f3. Prag down to a minute and three seconds. He needs to move faster. Queen g3 check. Another four moves towards time control. King has to come up. And now notice what Prag does next. The king wants to run away from here. And so instead of giving a check, he can actually cut it off. He finds it. The king is cut off from escaping. That is a very important thing. 
And after rook e2, well, what to do now? f5 is just over. If you take with the knight, there are problems because of check here. Yes, he plays it. And if you take with the king, queen g6 and queen e6 is checkmate next move. There you have it. Maxime Lagarde resigns. What a game by Pragnananda. The way in which he sacrificed the piece and then did not actually go into cash the material but rather brought all of his pieces into the game, shows his level of understanding, his actual attacking instincts. And what a game. I think one of the best games of Pragnananda and perhaps one of the best games if you want to show someone how to bring all the pieces into the attack. This is what we learn from this game. And in this many match of two games, Pragnananda has won with the black pieces. And that usually is a big advantage because now tomorrow in the second game, he will just need to draw against Maxime Lagarde. Prag sets up all his pieces as he has been taught since a very young age that it's always good to arrange your pieces. The black king stands on the dark square, which signifies that Prag has won. Guys, we have all witnessed something truly special. Enjoy.